Welcome to Mercy Medical Center's live webinar. I am Lynn Harmon, Program Coordinator, and today's topic is Treatment Options Peripheral Neuropathy. Joining us is Luann Weber of Mercy's Occupational Therapy. After her discussion, she will take questions from our audience. To submit your questions after the webinar, hover your mouse over the green bar at the top center of your screen and then click on the question and icon at the far right of your strip. If you don't see the icon, click on the arrow at the very far right and then click on Q&A. We ask that you um, submit your questions versus under the question and answer and not under the chat icon. And then from that drop-down box, uh, type in your question, and your questions will be confidential. Well, I'm very happy to welcome you to our webinar today, um, Luann, and I'm going to turn the mic over to you now so we can go ahead and get started. Thank you, Lynn. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. When I first introduce myself to patients and begin their evaluation, I always ask them, what is the one thing that's most bothersome to you in everyday life? And I began to see a trend after a while that neuropathies were mentioned more than any other problem. So I started doing some more research on the causes, the treatments available, and what, as an occupational therapist, I could do to offer some help to these people. So today, I'm going to give you some basic information about what peripheral neuropathy is, what causes it, some treatment ideas, and then some resources that you can follow up on. Peripheral neuropathy is damage to the nerve endings, mostly in your extremities, like your feet and your hands. It can go up your arms or your legs. Neuropathies can also affect your organs, such as your kidneys, your esophagus, your stomach, any of your organs. It can also um, affect them. You have a central nervous system and a peripheral nervous system. The brain and the spinal cord are in your central nervous system and then that branches out to the peripheral nervous system and uh, goes down through your arms, your legs, all the nerve endings that cause feelings like such as numbness, tingling, pain, that's um, the two central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system work together to send signals. Here's just a picture of the nervous system. Like in the green, you can see the brain and the spinal cord, and that's your central. And then all those threads that go beyond that central nervous system belong to the peripheral nervous system. And that's where the problem is, and that's where you get those um, feelings of numbness, tingling, pain. The causes of neuropathies, there are many. Diabetes is probably the number one cause. It's because the high blood sugars that you have from diabetes cause damage to the nerve endings. Chemotherapy is another uh, cause for neuropathies, and it's just certain kind of chemotherapies. It's the platinum in the chemo that is problematic. Alcoholism, the alcohol that you drink is toxic to nerve cells, and it's also believed because alcoholics don't have a, um, a very good nutrition, a good diet, so um, they don't eat real healthy, that can be linked to uh, neuropathy, uh, nerve ending damage as well. Shingles, if you've ever had shingles or know of anybody that's had shingles, you know how incredibly painful that can be, and that is an inflammation of the nerve endings. It follows a specific dermatome in your body. Poor circulation, as people get older, their arteries and veins get thinner, and they have less oxygenated blood that flows through the arteries and your veins. Your uh, nerve endings need good oxygenated blood. Sometimes people have low vitamin B levels, or they can have a tumor pressing on nerves, causing numbness. Also, autoimmune disorders like Renaud's syndrome. And just as a side effect um, of carpal tunnel, the median nerve is trapped underneath the reticulum in your wrist, and that causes uh, numbness and tingling, 
And sometimes when we see patients, we have to distinguish what the neuropathy is from. Some people will come in and say, oh, I have neuropathy. But once I evaluate them, I notice that only their thumb, their index finger, the ring finger, and half of their ring finger, the middle finger, is numb and tingling. And that's, that's an indication that it's a carpal tunnel problem. And that is um, more easily fixed. The symptoms of neuropathies, um, there's more symptoms than there are causes. Number one is pain, excruciating pain. A lot of people um, say that even the blankets on their bed cause them incredible pain. Uh, buttoning a button, picking something up, a coin, can all of a sudden just have searing pain through your hand. Tingling, the pins and needles, feeling like when you hit your crazy bone, that's in your hands and your feet all day long, all night long. So it's very annoying and frustrating. Decreased sensation, uh, numbness, sometimes people's legs uh, and their hands, but more I would say people have complete numbness in their feet. And uh, I have an example of a patient that uh, had chemo-induced neuropathies, and she said that she was shaving her legs, and all of a sudden when she looked down to, to dry her legs off in the shower, she had saw, she saw a pool of blood because, because of the razor, she had nicked herself so many times in her legs that they had been bleeding, and she had no idea because her legs were that numb. Burning, uh, a lot of people have burning in their feet. It's an incredible sensation, especially at night. It just feels like that uh, you have matches on your feet, that they're burning, dropping things. This is probably one of the most frustrating things. I've had patients tell me that they've dropped big bottles of ketchup on the floor where ketchup spilled all over because the, the uh, bottle broke. Um, they'll drop a glass of water. They just can't hang on to things. Uh, there's two reasons for this. Number one, the numbness and the sensation. So when they're holding a glass, they don't know how much to push onto the glass to be able to hold it. So when you're walking across the room, when you're holding a glass of water, you don't even think about that. But these people have to think constantly, how much pressure am I keeping on the glass so that I don't drop it? Balance problems not knowing where your feet are on the ground. Um, it's called proprioception, and you have uh, nerve endings in your feet that are proprioceptors, and they kind of tell you where you are. So it would be like a normal person, person standing on a piece of foam. And if you ever try this, sometimes it's really amazing how you don't know where you are on, on the ground, where your feet are. So when you go up steps, when you put your foot over a tub, you just don't know where that one step ends and the next one begins because you just don't have that proprioception. You don't know, have the feeling in your feet to know where you're at. So you oftentimes trip or stumble. When I see patients, a lot of times um, they'll come in for a totally different reason, but then they'll say, well, I, ha I have this uh, shoulder pain that's 9 out of 10 and because I fell. And then when we get to talking about it, they fell because of the neuropathy. Hand and finger coordination is also huge because you don't have the sensation. You have that numbness and tingling in your fingers. So it's hard to button buttons. Zippers are very difficult. Picking up small items, typing, putting earrings in your ear, or um, clasping a clasp on a necklace. Cold sensitivity. Most people that have neuropathies, um, when they're out in the cold, their hands and their feet hurt a lot more. Muscle weakness. The people that I see, they don't even realize how weak their hands are until I start measuring the strength in their hands. We all have a norm um, for how much strength we need to have in our fingers and our hands according to your age and whether you're a male or a female. So what I will test these patients is uh, prehension strength, which is a pinch on your fingers, your thumb, your middle finger, and your index finger. And then I'll also test grip strength. And it's usually half of what a normal person has. So in addition to 
not feeling, you're also very, very weak. And that's another reason why um, you drop things. It's a combination of not having enough strength and the numbness and the, and the tingling in your hands and, and your feet. Some people have trouble swallowing because your esophagus can also have neuropathy in, uh, like I said before, there are organs that have um, neuropathies affect them as well. And then some people have uh, decreased or no reflexes. There's a lot of different treatments for neuropathy. Uh, number one, probably the treatment is medication, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, infrared light is a, a therapy that we have at Mercy here. We have one at the hospital machine as well as the plaza on Council Street. Uh, we talk to, with occupational therapy and physical therapy. We talk about safety precautions. Um, and just as an example for a safety precaution, we always tell people to check their feet every single day. I've had some um, patients I know that have stepped in a needle, and because their feet are so numb, they didn't even know for two weeks they had the needle in their foot. So, you know, you don't realize how incredibly numb your feet are until you have a, a problem like that. Balance exercise uh, routines with therapy, you need to have really good balance because you do not want to fall. Falls are the number one reason that people enter a nursing home. So if you have poor balance and you don't know where your feet are, it's a good recipe for a, a fall risk. Strengthening grip and hand strength, uh, we do that with occupational therapy. And uh, when you have poor balance, the stronger your core muscles are, the better balance you're going to have. And we also give uh, ideas for adaptive equipment to help be more independent. If you can't button buttons um, by with your hands, we have button um, adaptive equipment um, for buttoning, for zipping, many other uh, other adaptive equipment um, that I'll talk a little bit about later. This is a picture of the infrared light therapy system. The box in the middle is the unit itself, and then the pads on each side, we Velcro them to the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. Infrared light is, is FDA cleared. It's a non-invasive medical uh, piece of equipment. It was actually developed in response to experiments by NASA for the healing of injuries in space. It's often used by the Navy SEALs to heal their injuries, and a lot of uh, national sports teams also use infrared light to heal the athlete's injuries quicker. Infrared light emits monochromatic infrared light by wavelength. So the wavelength penetrates at least two inches deep. When you put heat on an, uh, an injury, like a hot pack, it just barely makes the surface uh, and below the surface warm, but this penetrates very deep. It triggers the local re uh, release of nitric oxide and increases the blood flow. And increased blood flow, anytime you have um, more dilation of your blood vessels, that reduces pain and inflammation. It promotes angiogenesis, which, which it means that it promotes new blood vessels from pre-existing vessels. And that's really important because if the vessels that you have are constricted, um, this machine will actually form new pathways for blood to get to your extremities. And it also provides collagen synthesis, which forms connective tissue. Nitric oxide is released the same way that morphine works. So it stimulates the endothelial lining of both your arteries and your veins, and it again opens the blood vessels for improved blood flow, which increases the circulation and feeds those nerve endings nourished blood. And the, you know, I think it was very, it's very interesting the way um, that nitric oxide follows the same pathway as morphine. So in the patients that we have seen with neuropathies, the infrared light works very well on pain relief. It doesn't work so much for the numbness. That is very, very difficult to um, get rid of is the numbness. But the pain, if you have excruciating pain, many times um, the infrared light works well. 
It's not only used for neuropathies, but it also promotes wound healing by forming the collagen that's needed to repair wounds. And that's when I first found out about the infrared light. Insurance used to pay for um, the therapy uh, using the infrared light machine. It used to be used totally in all the wound centers. People would have wounds that wouldn't heal for years, and they used this um, light machine for um, stasis ulcers to repair them, and it would take much, much less time. They, re they repaired very quickly. The infrared light helps heal broken bones and muscle sprains, again, by increasing the blood flow, and it decreases pain. It's in not just neuropathy pain, but amputation pain as well. We had a, a patient um, last year who um, got his fingers cut off in a log splitter, and he came to us and he could not button buttons. He could dress himself. He could barely feed himself because the pain was so incredible. And we used a lot of different modalities. We used fluidotherapy. We used just everything that we could think of. And finally, I said, you know what, let's just try the, the infrared light to see if that is going to help. So we, we worked with him three times a week. We put the machine on uh, for uh, about four to six weeks. And by the end of six weeks, he was totally independent and pain-free. He was a big fisherman, and all he wanted to do in the spring was go back to fishing. And by the time that April and May ran around, he, he was um, fishing. He was putting uh, lures on the, on the line, uh, tying knots and, and everything. So he was uh, one of our great success stories. You can lower the risk of neuropathies due to chemotherapy by um, doing a couple different things. One, you can uh, give a smaller dose of the chemotherapy. You can give the same dose, but you're going to give it over six hours instead of one hour. And the patients at the cancer center will often be asked every time they come in for chemo, how are your hands feeling? How are your feet? Uh, what are your symptoms? Are they getting worse? Is it becoming more problematic with the ADLs, with the dressing, bathing, uh, that sort of thing? And if, if you do have problems, then you need to tell your doctor that, yeah, it's really getting to be a problem. And then they will... Um, they will either stop chemotherapy for a little while until those neuropathies kind of get better, and then they can restart when the, when the symptoms subside. Also, you can get chemo as a non-stop infusion, and that just means that you're going to do it over several days, get the IV several days instead of maybe in three to four hours. And again, the chemotherapy, it's just a certain uh, chemos that have platinum in, and I, I know that Taxol is one of them. Other treatments, medication, I talked, I, lots of people are on uh, medications, antidepressants, anticonvulsants, and some of the names of these drugs, I've, I'm sure you've heard them on TV, Lyrica, Neurontin, Cymbalta, they're all very common medications for neuropathies. Another treatment is physical and occupational therapy, acupuncture, steroids in the short term to just decrease the inflammation. Some people come in and they are in such incredible pain that you, they just do need some type of steroid just to stop that inflammation temporarily anyway. Lidocaine patches, um, they're just topical pain relief you can put on top of your skin and they release uh, pain medicine uh, through your skin. Some people need narcotics for severe pain, and then there's also biofeedback and TENS. Anti-seizure medications that are usually used for shingles pain, and that's uh, gabapentin or Neurontin and Lyrica. And for diabetic neuropathy, usually they use the antidepressants, Cymbalta, Amitriptyline, Nortriptyline. And what these antidepressants uh, do, they interfere with the chemical processes in your brain that you don't feel as much pain. And then this is the uh, more for the chemo-induced neuropathies, B6 and alpha-lipoic acid. And just before um, I want to, uh, before I go on, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that before you do any kind of added medication like B6 
or alpha lipoic, you always want to ask your doctor uh, if you can do this because chemotherapy is um, specifically designed for which type of tumor you have. And sometimes anything as simple as uh, a vitamin will interfere with that chemotherapy. So don't add medicines um, without making sure that your oncologist knows that. Physical therapy can help determine what your balance score is when you, uh, when you first start with them. They do these evaluations and they, can, they have you, walk, you sit in a chair, you walk, you turn around and you go back into the chair and they time you while you do this. And according to your score, they can tell whether you're at a high risk for falls. Sometimes all you need is a cane, uh, to, especially when you go outside just to keep your balance, especially on uneven surfaces. Again, because you don't have that feeling in your feet, you don't know when you're stepping off of a curb or when you're going onto gravel or grass or a sidewalk. So sometimes just a cane or a walker, um, just when you go outside is enough to prevent a fall. They also uh, give you strengthening exercises for your core, your legs, ankles, and feet. And then they also uh, give you a balance exercise program. Occupational therapy works with patients uh, increasing their hand and finger uh, strength because sometimes by just getting rid of the weakness, you, you decrease your pain and you're much more functional. Find more co fine motor coordination some, when you're unable to button, zip, pick up small objects, clasping a necklace, all those things that, are, that you need to do every day that are very, very uh, frustrating when you can't do them. So we have exercises that in, can, can increase your coordination. Adaptive equipment to help you with buttoning, zipping, opening containers, driving, um, getting in and out of the tub. Uh, the bathroom is one of the main areas where people do fall, so you need some um, adaptive equipment sometimes. And a lot of things um, that people don't think about would be like the numbness in your hands and feet when you drive. So if your feet are totally numb, how do you think that you can feel the gas and the brake pedals, the difference between them or even where they are? So driving is a huge issue if you have uh, neuropathies in your feet. And Mercy has a driving program uh, with occupational therapy. We have a lot of different devices and a lot of different um, tips on how you can improve your driving skills with adaptive equipment. We have um, hand brakes that fit onto your steering wheel and the gas the accelerator pad uh, as well so that you can put them on your driving column rather than uh, down in the, the brake and, and the floor. So um, just be aware that there is help if you have problems driving, if you have neuropathy. Here's just a picture of a deluxe bath bench. And this is one of the easiest ways to get in and out of the tub, the safest ways. So what you do is just sit on the edge of that bath bench. It extends over the tub. You scoot your bottom into the tub and swing your feet over the tub. You never have to step over. You're in the tub then, and you can sit down while you shower, or you can stand up and sit down as you need. And you re in most cases, you'd want to have a long shower hose for this situation. And then to get out, the same thing. You just scooch your bottom out to the edge of the bench and dry off while you're sitting down. Some ways to minimize your symptoms. If you are on pain medication, use them. Get and be on an even keel with your pain medications. Don't let it get so out of control that you're crazy with pain. Uh, keep taking them on schedule as you need them. Avoid things that make your neuropathies worse, like hot and cold temperatures or snug clothes or shoes. I um, am a big fan of diabetic shoes if you, um, can, if you have diabetes because there are fewer seams in the shoes. If you have neuropathies and you buy a new pair of shoes or even socks that have a seam, they can rub on your foot and you have no idea 
that until you take your socks off at night and your sock is full of blood from a blister. So you want to make sure when you buy new shoes that you um, buy them big enough and that you check them periodically the, when you're still breaking them in. Give yourself extra time to do things and ask friends for help when you when things that really that are so difficult for you to do, but really for somebody else, they're a cinch. So uh, ask for help. Don't drink alcohol because that can cause nerve damage on its own, and it also um, makes your balance a lot worse and you're at a higher risk of falling. If you have diabetes, control your blood sugar, watch your diet, because again, high blood, high blood sugar can damage the nerve endings. If you have neuropathies in your hands, make sure you use knives and scissors um, very uh, carefully. And uh, also when you take things out of the microwave, especially hot coffee or hot boiling water so that you don't spill that on your hands. Protect your hands by wearing gloves when you clean, work outside, or do repairs. If the neuropathy is in your feet, sit down as much as possible, even while you brush your teeth. Or I always uh, recommend that you have a chair or a stool in the kitchen. So when you peel vegetables or do the dishes, you can sit down and um, take some of that pain away from your feet by standing all the time. Talked about this before, take care of your feet every day. Look underneath the, the soles of your feet so that you see if you have any injuries or open sores. If you're diabetic, any type of open sore or injury is harder to heal than the normal person. So you want to get um, that taken care of right away. You always want to wear shoes that cover your whole foot when you're walking, even in the house, and always wear shoes when you go outside. I've said this before about, you know, the falling is the number one reason people end up in a nursing home by breaking a hip or breaking your pelvis. So just be aware that um, it's it's better to, to use a cane and then not fall. Then uh, some people are very, very proud and they don't want to use a cane or a walker. But really, um, if that's going to keep you from falling, you're, you're way better off by just using a simple cane or a walker. If you have steps into your house or down to the basement or up to your bedroom, handrails are almost always a necessity. It's, it's um, amazing how when you do stairs, you just walk up the stairs without hanging on to a handrail or a wall, how much uh, worse your balance is. So handrails. Uh, up and down stairs are uh, essential, and you can also get grab bars in your bathroom. And again, a walker or a cane um, is recommended if your therapist um, suggests that. At night when you get up to go to the bathroom, make sure you have a night light on so that you can see what you're doing and not trip and fall. Protect yourself from heat injuries. I've seen people that got into a bathtub, they filled the water up, and didn't realize how hot the water was, and they scalded their feet. Uh, so you want to set your water heater between 105 and 120 degrees. Use oven gloves and hot pads when handling hot dishes, racks, or pans. And then the best way to check your bath water is actually to have a thermometer in there. Especially people with um, Renaud syndrome, you always want to keep your hands and feet as warm as possible, especially in cold weather. And you want to stay out of, uh, and this, this winter has been a really a miserable winter for anybody with neuropathies and Renaud syndrome. Uh, Renaud syndrome is just a, a narrowing of the vessels in your hands and your feet. What you want to do is get a really good pair of gloves. You want to uh, get a pair of gloves as well when you get anything out of the freezer. Your fingers, you, they, they're initially red and they turn, they can turn pure white um, with, with that um, circulation decreased in your fingertips. You can be outside and if you don't have gloves on and your hands don't really feel cold because they're numb, but they can be frostbitten uh, very, very easily. One thing that I give all of my neuropathy patients uh, are a pair of isotoner gloves. And I would say 99% of my patients 
are amazed at how much they are helpful. They're just basic little um, nylon gloves that we used to use, uh, and we still do, for patients that have had strokes and have swelling in their hands. But this keeps your hands very warm. I always tell my patients to wear them at night to bed because for some reason that just really helps them uh, avoid the pain even the next day. And for people that in the afternoon sometimes you'll have, you just have this um, really bad series of time in the afternoon when your, your hands are just killing you, just go ahead and put those gloves on. It's very, very helpful. That kind of decreases the pain. It warms your hands up. And for some reason, it just takes that pain away. Occupational therapy also does home visits. They can come visit into your home and take a look at your environment in the home to see if there's anything that you can do uh, that can help you be more independent and more safe. Sometimes just by, um, we do this every day, we can go into a home and kind of just see things right away that you just have no idea that would help you like um, elevated toilet seats to get off the toilet. Rather than ripping up your whole bathroom and putting in a high toilet seat, sometimes all you need is a toilet seat riser that has uh, handles on so that you can push up easier. So we do um, do home visits uh, on a regular basis. I'm just giving you some websites here too. Uh, you can look at all these websites at your convenience. The neuropathy.org is a great uh, resource for neuropathy pain treatment, um, and it kind of gives a really good, simple explanation of uh, what neuropathy is. Cancer Support Care and then cancer.org, they talk a lot about chemo-induced uh, neuropathy. And then there are Salmon's Preston and Maxi Aids and North Coast Medical, they're all websites that have good information on adaptive equipment. And you'll see stuff out there that um, you've never known were possible, and you don't have to always get it from the, these companies. Like, for instance, um, a lot of people with neuropathies can't even hold on to silverware. So just by using a um, pipe insulation tube, at the hardware store, you can put that on a fork and it builds that handle up so that you can grab it easier and you can feed yourself much easier. So there's lots of ideas out there that just by looking at these websites, you might find something or see something that, that you think, oh, you know, that, that's a great idea. I never thought of that. I could get that at um, the hardware store. Also, uh, Active Forever, uh, they carry the compression gloves that I give out. They're just isotoner edema gloves. We also carry those at the Mercy Home Medical Store on first floor right next to the gift shop. So if you're interested in those, or the gloves that I like the most uh, have the fingertips out. So um, that's the end of uh, my portion of the um, talk here. And if you have any questions or concerns down the road, I would be more than happy to answer your emails or your phone calls. My email is lweber at mercycare.org, and my phone number is 319-398-6514. And I'm going to turn this over to Lynn now, and we can uh, finish up with the question and answer portion. Thank you, Luann. Excellent information, and we are now ready for your questions. And just to remind you, your questions can be submitted by hovering the mouse over the green bar at the top of your screen. And then again, to remember to go to the question and answer icon. And we have um, questions coming in. I think the first question we'll go to um, is just kind of a general one. Luann, you mentioned TENS units. Um, what are they and how do they help? 
TENS unit is, uh, stands for transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, and it often works kind of like uh, what we were talking about, the antidepressant. It kind of uh, messes up the brain's uh, pain signals in your brain. The, um, it sends signals, it interferes with the signals that your brain sends um, regarding pain. So it's a little it's a little box, and it has electrodes that you put on your um, skin, and you wear that um, throughout the day. You can set it up um, for different areas of your body, and you can turn it up and down. Okay, our next question um, is specific, but I think the general question really is. Um, uh, Luen, what impact, can you talk directly about how blood sugars would impact uh, tingling and numbness in the feet? And I imagine this is with a person who has um, diabetes-related neuropathy. One thing that I did, me did not mention is that, um, especially with chemo-induced uh, neuropathies, you can get better after the chemo is over with. So that is a, a positive with the chemo-induced uh, neuropathies. And so it takes a long time because your periphery, peripheral nerves are so far away from your central nervous system, it takes a long time for those to repair. The question um, regarding the blood sugars and uh, diabetic neuropathies is that you're always going to have, unfortunately, diabetes. So the diabetes that you have um, can get worse and can make your um, your feet and your hands more numb as time goes on. Uh, the main thing is to continue to be very diligent about your blood sugars. Uh, it, it's, uh, diabetes is just a very complex disease and it's difficult to know um, as we go on how much that is affecting the neuropathies. And, you know, just watching your blood sugar is certainly going to help, but it's not going to be the answer. If you keep your blood sugars uh, absolutely uh, stellar, that's still, you still may get the neuropathies. All right, next question related to the medications. Are there any that don't adversely affect the digestive system? Okay, I'm not a real expert on medications, but um, a lot of people have problems with those medications that I just mentioned. They're not able to tolerate them. Uh, and so that's why I've given different uh, options, um, you know, like the infrared light or the gloves. What you need to do is just try a lot of different things. There's not one sure answer that is going to work. So what you need to do is maybe try different um, treatments that I've measured, that I've mentioned, because um, that it, it is unfortunate that uh, the medications, a lot of people can't tolerate them. They try, they start. And um, some people can, and some people can't. Okay, another um, question from one of our listeners says, my feet are always cold. I wear thick, fuzzy wool socks, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. Circulation in the feet um, is good and strong. Extra blankets over my feet when I go to bed are also used, but I still get cold feet. Uh, Luann, do you have any suggestions for this listener? Yeah, um, the feet being cold, it's not always, um, you know, wearing the socks. It's not always the circulation. It's the nerve endings in addition to the vessels, the, the veins in your feet. So if the veins in your feet and you have a good pulse and everything, that's, that's good. You've got a good circulation. But still the nerve endings can be a problem. And I don't know if you have diabetes. And um, there are some people that, that have idiopathic uh, neuropathies, and that just means that no no one knows why you have them. There, there's a lot of people out there that don't have diabetes. They've never had chemo, but they have 
this god-awful neuropathy in their hands and their feet. Some of the neuropathies are genetic. Um, about the, the cold feet, the, the, I do hear that a lot. I would just try to continue to wear the socks. Um, one suggestion I could give you is um, they have warm slippers. So you can get these slippers that you actually put in the microwave and get them real warm, and then you slip those on before you go to bed. Now, some people have really felt that this has been very, very helpful, and they use them almost every single night. Um, what about, and the next question is, what about neuropathy in someone who has not had chemo or diabetes? The brother and nephew both have neuropathy without either diabetes or chemo. And I think I just answered that. Um, they, some people have neuropathies just for absolute no reason. And again, sometimes it's genetic. Uh, sometimes I see people like truck drivers that have driven truck for uh, 20 years and the vibration in the, in the truck itself with the steering wheel and on the floorboard, they end up with nerve damage. So, um, you know, that can be from, you know, your occupation. Sometimes uh, people that use a jackhammer all day, uh, the vibration, in, it just damages the nerve endings in your feet and your hands. So that could be one cause of um, neuropathy that be, just because you don't have um, diabetes or uh, haven't had chemo, that could be the reason that you have those problems. Okay, when I sit in my recliner, my feet go to sleep and become numb. What causes this? Sometimes that can be caused because of the circulation in your feet. Um, your arteries bring the blood away from your heart down to your feet, and the veins bring the blood back up to your heart. So some people have peripheral artery disease, and that means the arteries that go down into your feet, they become very, very narrow. So when you put your feet up, your legs go numb and are actually have more pain than when they go down. So um, you could have some peripheral artery disease. So that, that would probably um, be part of it. Also, do you have your feet crossed when you sit in the recliner? Because as you know, those, uh, your, the weight of your one leg on top of the other can pinch off, off those um, veins and arteries. So, okay. We've had a couple of questions related to B12. I know you mentioned the B vitamins and um, related to how does this help or a deficiency. I, uh, is this something, Luann, that you can address or may need to get back to the person with this question? You know, there's a lot of information out there about vitamins um, and, you know, uh, there's a big uh, surge for holistic medicine, and uh, that's, a, that's a great um, route to go down, I think, but there's, there's just not enough research, really, to know for sure. Even this uh, lipoic acid and the B6, um, B12, you have to be really careful about not getting too much into your system because that can create other problems. And as like I said before, if you're on chemotherapy, you have to make sure that you let your doctor know any type of thing that you're on, any kind of vitamin, because that can interfere with the kind of chemo you have. Um, I would do, just look on the internet and um, read a little bit about B12 uh, and what that would help in neuropathies. Because what I've read is, um, you know, the vitamin B6 and the vitamin B12, they've done some research, but it isn't really uh, conclusive whether that helps or not. So I hope that answered uh, your question somewhat. Okay. 
Okay, switching topics a little bit here, is a physician referral needed um, to um, uh, receive your services and does insurance cover the cost of therapy and the equipment that you've discussed? Okay, uh, yeah, a free Physician referral is needed to have um, physical therapy or occupational therapy, and um, what you need to do is talk to your doctor, and they can um, call centralized scheduling to get that order in and make the appointment. Um, insurance coverage, what we usually do when we give you infrared light is that we also um, we talk to you about balance, we talk to you about safety, all the things that I've talked about uh, in, in the webinar, we put you on an exercise program and then we offer you the um, chance or the choice to have infrared light or not. Insurance covers the portion that, of the exercises that we give you and the evaluation. Insurance does not cover uh, infrared light. Medicare does cover five dollars uh, on the on the charge. So what we've done is because it is helpful, but insurance doesn't cover it, and that's why most clinics don't offer infrared light is because insurance doesn't cover. So what we do is that we charge everybody twenty five dollars for the treatment. We turn it into your insurance, and if you know if your insurance picks that up. That's great. I know uh, Medicare does only pay a very small portion of it. Blue Cross and Blue Shield uh, does not pay for it. So what we do is um, just charge you $25. We have you try it out for about four to six weeks. And then if you find, if you're diabetic, um, you, what you would probably need to do if it, if it makes a great difference is you'd want, probably want to buy a home unit. The home unit uh, is about five or $600. We give you the website to purchase that unit, and then you can use it uh, at home at your convenience. It takes about 30 minutes to have those pads on per day. And if you get relief from that, then um, you know that's. I think it's really well worth the five to six hundred dollars uh, when you consider how much medication is. So that's one. Um, that's one way to look at it, anyway. When you mentioned um, peripheral artery disease um, a couple minutes ago and somebody is following up with that, good treatments, um, really who would they contact for more information and um, guidance on this issue? Well, I would go to my uh, family physician and um, they can refer you to someone that can help you with that. They would probably want to do some testing uh, to see how your arteries, um, how clogged they are, and if they are, if they are um, diminished at all. Uh, the one treatment that um, we recommend is, is really doing a lot of walking, and I know that is um, some, it's very difficult and it's hard and painful to do a lot of walking with peripheral artery disease because it does hurt when you put your legs up and when you, um, when you walk it does cause more pain. So I would start with my family doctor. Um, they can recommend uh, a specialist and they'll want to do some testing too to see how um, how much uh, impairment you have in your arteries. Okay, the next question is, I do have neuropathy in my feet. When I'm at rest, my feet are constantly twitching or moving. How can I reduce this twitching? Well, I would maybe think that you, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of um, restless leg syndrome, but kind of it kind of sounds like you've got um, maybe um, that could be what you have is some restless leg syndrome. Uh, and I, uh, there's the same kind of medications, I do believe, for restless leg syndrome as neuropathy. So uh, depending on if you're on medication for neuropathy already, that um, is supposed to help a little bit with the twitching and moving. And I know that's another huge thing that a lot of, uh, a lot of people uh, have is uh, restless leg syndrome, and that's very annoying as well.
We have a question asked about vitamin D level or deficiency affecting neuropathy, and I don't think, Luann, is there anything to add on to that um, discussion? From what I understand is vitamin D um, deficiency, not, that, not to my knowledge, does that cause um, neuropathy. Okay, I just want to remind people that um, we've had many, many questions coming in. If you could um, bring your questions in through the question and answer, not the, um, the chat icon, it um, will be able to respond to your questions better. Uh, I guess one other question came in, and it was uh, we talked about whether or not peripheral neuropathy is reversible, and you talked about related to um, chemo, but is there um, anything else, any other um, situations where it is reversible or anything you can do to stop the progress? It depends on whether, you know, the, the status of those little nerve endings. Uh, if if you if you're an alcoholic and you continue to drink, it's going to get worse. If you are a diabetic and you continue to um, you know not watch your diet and have high blood sugars, and I, and I realize that it's not always about watching what you eat. And some people are very erratic uh, diabetics, and um, no matter what they do, their diabetes is all over the the place. But um, the the main thing that you can do is do everything you can to stay in good health. Um, don't drink, don't smoke, don't um, watch your diabetes, take your medications, and you're going to be in a better spot. Um, diet, the, the neuropathies do, can mend themselves. It just depends on how damaged they are. Again, it takes a long, long time to heal or to um, repair the neuropathies because they're so far away, but um, they do heal very slowly, like I said. They probably will never go away completely, although in chemo-induced uh, neuropathies, it can. It can totally go away. Now, diabetic neuropathies, I have not heard of anybody absolutely getting rid of, of all the the numbness and pain in their feet because diabetes is a, is a chronic condition. Our um, next webinar topic, just taking a break from the questions for a minute, um, here is Why Immunize with Dr. James Matsuda, the Medical Director of Pediatrics at Mercy Medical Center. Uh, this will be broadcast Tuesday, April 15th from noon to 1. And again, he will take your questions live after the discussion. Now, to answer a question that came in earlier, will Luann's um, PowerPoint outline her um, this um, webinar be taped? And the answer is yes. Um, this is being taped so that you can view it again. You can share it um, with friends or family members. And it will be available at the um, website at the bottom of your screen, mercycare.org forward slash live. And uh, we should have it up and posted within the next day or so. Uh, you can also check this uh, website for information about future webinars and, again, to look back over past webinars uh, that we've, we've offered. If you are interested in uh, learning more about uh, upcoming webinars or other events at Mercy, you can sign up for Mercy's electronic newsletter at mercycare.org forward slash enews. Now I'm going to check to make sure that we have answered all the questions that um, have come into us, and I believe we have. But again, if um, there's another question um, that you know, if you did miss, you think about it after um, we um, close out, or if you um, share it, please email Luann at lweber at mercycare.org or her telephone number 398-6514. So I um, want to, again, thank you, um, Luann, for your time and um, thank all of you for listening.